the San Antonio Spurs select Victor Wembanyama. We're thrilled that we're able to bring Victor on board. He's obviously a, a heck of a talent. I'm happy for my son because he'll be able to grow up with a Wimbenyama jersey and it'll inspire him to play basketball even more than what it would have been, just like Tim, Tim and David Robinson did for me. Hearing that, that sentence from Adam Silver, you know, I, I've dreamed of it so, so much that, you know, I, I gotta cry, man. I'm a and damn spur. You are a spur. Good morning, Case Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Lots of happy Spurs fans waking up this Friday morning after last night's NBA draft. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is June 23rd. Happy Friday. We're so excited about it. We're going to get to all things Wimby in just a moment. But first, let's go ahead and check in with Mike. Did you get a chance to peek in on the draft last night, Mike? I think we all just did, Just right? as soon as he was, you know, walking up there and they had just called his name. Yeah. And then, you know, he was sitting down with his brother and sister and he started crying like this. I know. Yeah. All this, I mean, it is getting to a 19-year-old kid. But, yeah, I mean, great. That's, that's fantastic. I think we all got some chills last night. Yeah. I just want to know if the noise when they made that announcement oh. at the AT&T Center <laughs> yeah. registered on a seismograph. I'm I sure. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> wouldn't, sure I get, think they probably heard that around the country. Anyway, good morning, everybody. Uh, the humidity, we had that break yesterday. It has kind of come back up somewhat this morning, and temperatures right now are at 77 degrees. So we're once again, it's a different situation than, of course, what we had yesterday with some of that rain-cooled air. We are once again about three above normal 78 port sa but ooh, no 80 well gonzalez 80 right now uh that's the only one on the map and these numbers have like i said definitely come back up we had that somewhat break in the humidity and of course yesterday we were down in the mid to upper 60s with those dew point temperatures not bad as far as the heat index is concerned right now but you will notice the humidity when you step outside mold is on the high side and that was from obviously some of that rain uh, cps energy it is a green energy conservation day you can scan that qr code if you need more information on that we do have heat advisories and excessive heat warnings, excessive heat warnings along the Rio Grande and down to the southwest and heat advisories elsewhere with the, both of those being in effect up until nine o'clock tonight, 92 at noon. And yeah, we only hit 95 yesterday, but it's back to 100 and we're going to be, be seeing a lot of those as far as rain chances. Well, maybe. I mean, I'll explain that coming up in just a couple of minutes. But the weekend forecast last weekend of June, that's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Seth, Mark. It is the moment we Spurs fans have been waiting for. Victor Wimbenyama will officially suit up for the silver and black this season to play for San Antonio. He's been called a generational talent by nearly all basketball analysts. And our David Sears shows us what this move means for the Spurs franchise going forward. Spur fans have been waking up this morning with a big smile on their face and a little pep in their step because a new era of Spurs basketball has begun. The 19-year-old French sensation Victor Wimbanyama is now officially a San Antonio Spur. As expected, he was taken by the Spurs with the first pick. The announcement coming just after 7 o'clock last night. It was an emotional night for Wimbanyama. Hugs all around. And then a huge moment for every draft pick. Wimbanyama was able to put on that Spurs cap and then he got a big hug from the commissioner Adam Silver when he sat down for his first interview he got emotional tears in his eyes after finally hugging his brother and sister the dream has come true accomplishing something that I've been dreaming of you know my whole life hearing that that sentence from Adam Silver you know I, I've dreamed of it so so much that you know I, I gotta cry man Wimbanyama is showing off his number one on his Spurs jersey. Now the journey begins. The hard work he has put in paid off, but that work in another way is just beginning. He follows in the footsteps of other Spurs great big men, Artis Gilmore, David Robinson, Tim Duncan. And now it is his chance to lead his young team down that road of excellence paved before him. 22 years of playoff appearances, six finals, five championships. Welcome Wimbanyama. Go Spurs, go. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. And the city is making sure Wimbanyama feels right at home with a Bonjour Wimby sign that's now up right outside of City Hall. The video was posted from the City of San Antonio's Twitter account. 
Lots of things happened last night you might have missed right now on KSAT.com. Our full coverage of Wimby and the NBA draft as well as reactions from fans. We also have how you could be the first to own a Wimbin Yama jersey. Also, Wimby expected to arrive in San Antonio early this afternoon. We'll have cover of a complete coverage rather of his arrival on air and online. There is other news this morning after a five day search, the deep sea submersible carrying five people on a voyage to the wreck of the Titanic was found in pieces from a catastrophic implosion that killed everyone on board. U.S. Coast Guard says a robotic diving vehicle deployed from a Canadian ship discovered a debris field from the submersible Titan. It was found on the seabed some 1,600 feet below the bow of the Titanic. A senior U.S. Navy official confirms to ABC News that an underwater sound was likely the implosion of the Titan submersible Sunday, not long after the vessel began its voyage. Experts say a fault or failure in the hull of the sub could have led to the implosion as the vessel gave way to the intense pressure of the deep ocean. Movie armor Hannah Gutierrez-Reed is facing additional charges connected to the fatal shooting on the Rust film set. She is now charged with tampering with evidence in addition to the two counts of involuntary manslaughter that were filed earlier this year. Prosecutors say that Gutierrez-Reed transferred narcotics to another person on set to avoid additional arrest. Her attorneys deny the new allegations, which come 20 months after the fatal incident on set. Gutierrez Reed, who was in charge of guns on the movie set, is charged in connection with the fatal shooting of the movie cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Prosecutors dismissed involuntary manslaughter charges against Alec Baldwin back in April after the actor claimed the gun he was handling had been tampered with. Well, now to that toxic train derailment in Ohio. Investigators are revealing the safety concerns raised just hours before the disaster. And as ABC's Andrea Fuji he explains with how long the investigation could take place. This morning, an NTSB hearing is underway to understand what went wrong in the catastrophic Norfolk Southern train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, in February. One first responder detailing the chaos at the scene, testifying he didn't know the train was carrying toxic chemicals and his team did not have the proper equipment. It was dark, uh, the fire. There was no possible way to determine what uh, was, you know, on fire and what cars were derailed. Early on, it was determined a wheel bearing failed moments before 38 cars derailed and caught fire, releasing hazardous chemicals. Many residents were evacuated, but even after months of being back, many fear for their health. I feel like people that might want to get out can't get out. I feel that just people are afraid for their own safety. The hearing revealed concerns by the train's engineer about the size of the 150 car train, but those worries were allegedly ignored by the yard master who told him this is what they want. The hearing also focused on the toxic fumes ingested by residents and first responders. I'm concerned about not only my responders, but everybody around for long-term health concerns. Hopefully we don't find anything. Uh, unfortunately, we probably will have some that will. Later today, the hearing will focus on safety measures along the tracks. It could take another year before the investigation is complete. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. 438, 77 degrees. Some popular products for kids are under recall right now. Up next, why some baby shark toys are being considered dangerous. Check out TransGuide, our first look on this Friday morning out there. And let's see how things are looking. 410 at Parent Vital, no problems to report there talk to Stephen coming up at the top of the hour. And looking out there with a live can, well, that small break in temperatures may be in the future. I mean, in the future, in the past. We're now at 77 degrees. It's humid and we're expecting a hot weekend. We'll be checking in with Mike very soon. 441 this morning, millions of children's products are under recall, including some very popular baby shark toys. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz explains why the sharks, some baby monitors, and some bike helmets can be dangerous. These sharks may be toys, but they're dangerous. Zuru is recalling seven and a half million Robo Alive baby shark bath toys, many and full size. Twelve children have sat or fallen on them and been impaled or punctured by the hard plastic fin. The company is giving refunds. 
Infant Tech is recalling 17,000 baby monitors. These are Zuby video monitors for the car. They're housed in cute plush animals. The problem? The battery. Three fires have been reported. Take the battery out. The company will send a new one. <laughs> And is this your child's bike helmet? Sound Around is recalling the Hurdle multi-purpose helmet because it does not meet standards and may not protect a child's head in a crash. These have the word Renegade printed on them. You can contact the company and get your money back. For model numbers on all of these recalled products, head to our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Time now is 442 and 77 degrees for now. Retailers going head to head with big summer savings from electronics to patio furniture to makeup. Up next, how you can take advantage of all the competition. And welcome back. It's 445. Amazon, Target, and Walmart are going head to head with big summer deals coming next month. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, retailers going head to head with big summer savings from electronics to patio furniture, kids clothing and makeup. There's definitely going to be a mad rush when it comes to certain items from retailers. Some consumers will want to, you know, be quick about shopping when these events roll around. Target, Best Buy, Amazon and Walmart all promising Christmas season savings in July. So how can you make the most of the battle for your buck? We'll see some really notable offers, especially if they're trying to match Amazon's competitive deals. Those households that may be looking to pick up really great deals on necessities, you may see those mixed in with, you know, the good prices on laptops and pieces of furniture and other things like that. And coming up at 7 a.m., how you can save big. With your GMA First Look, I'm Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And looking at the roads with TransGuy, looking over at I-10 and Hackberry, things are moving this Friday morning also at I-10 and West Avenue. So Mike Osterhage, has Mother Nature put a lid on showers and storms for the time being? Pretty much so. Okay. There may be something trying to pop up out to the uh, west and, you know, we still got this, we, we kind of call it a dirty northwesterly flow in the atmosphere, which means you get a little something and it just rides down here. There could be a couple of showers way out uh, western Valverde County. Um, that's, that's about it. But about the break is over. Doing. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we had a nice little break yesterday, not only from the showers and storms of the previous night, but then, of course, those uh, little uh, outflow boundary driven ones yesterday late morning popped up around the area. And here's a picture of one of those. Yeah, a couple of summer storms and that and some other factors kept us and I say only at 95 normal high is 93 but boy we'll take 95 it was 10 degrees colder excuse me not as hot I can you say colder when you're talking 95 uh, yesterday than what it was the previous three days when we hit those 105s from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Out there at the airport, well, not a complete cloud cover. You can see that uh, airplane off there in the distance getting ready to uh, line up to land. 73 right now is the dew point temperature. At this time yesterday, that number was down around 67. So we have obviously gotten a lot more moisture coming on in here. Dew points have dropped a little bit in portions of the hill country, but the humidity kind of made its way back on in after being much lower at this time yesterday. And they tried to, you know, come up a little bit during the afternoon. This is usually the situation where the humidity comes up somewhat in the morning. Now, as we go on through the day, though, yes, it will try to drop down somewhat. We're not going to be seeing those dew points like 76, 77 in the afternoons like earlier on in the week when we hit those uh, heat index readings up to 117, but we'll still have enough of a heat index out there or enough humidity out there to put the heat index right around 110 or so. And we are going to be topping off at 100 later on this afternoon. So yeah, it's going to be another hot one out there. Here's what I was talking about as far as that northwesterly flow that's still in place. And so this computer model does keep us with a chance for a couple of showers or maybe a thunderstorm to pop up out there, like I said, in western Valverde County. And once again, the atmosphere is, is set up to where if anything does pop up and odds are not that great, could become strong or potentially severe, but wouldn't really yeah, as far as rain chances get too excited about it. The high, which is Really, the culprit for all the, the hot weather we've been having is just far enough to the southwest of us that around that clockwise flow, that's why we have that northwesterly flow in the atmosphere. Elsewhere around the country, uh, boy, there's not a heck of a lot going on. Obviously, this big storm system up there moving into the northeast and still more rain in southeast part of the United States. But 
Other than that, for us, like I said, there is just nothing going on. It is just going to remain very hot and unfortunately get hotter as time goes on. Going to be up to 100 today, 102 over the weekend. And it'll continue to creep up a couple of more degrees. Low temperatures will be staying in the upper 70s, still above normal. Didn't mean to kick the set there. Sure. <laughs> angry, Solidly angry built. about the triple digits. Yes, indeed. <laughs> We had no idea you were so passive aggressive. <laughs> and uh, again, the, the hope being that at least we do have somewhat lower humidity in the afternoon, so we're not going to be getting those outrageous heat index readings. You know what, Mike? Okay. It's Friday. Do what, do what you want. Yeah. You do you. Okay? We'll support you either yeah. way. Kick, kick. There we go. There well, go. stuff's going to spill. <laughs> <laughs> 450, 77 degrees. Coming up next, there's already great news for Tom Cruise and the upcoming Mission Impossible sequel. Plus, Jennifer Lawrence gets raunchy in a new R-rated comedy in theaters this weekend. Here's a look at your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, one, three, zero, Fireball, zero. Daily four, three, nine, eight, eight, Fireball, zero. Cash five, five, ten, thirteen, eighteen, twenty-three. And your Texas two-step. 1, 12, 15, 26, bonus ball 32. Jennifer Lawrence is back in theaters this weekend, plus it looks like Tom Cruise has another big hit in the making. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I'm going to teach you how to have fun. Am I allowed to be here? You can't be scared of everything your whole life. Jennifer Lawrence gets raunchy in the new R-rated comedy No Hard Feelings in theaters this weekend. She plays a woman who has to seduce a teen, played by Andrew Barth Feldman, and he tells me Lawrence is a great comedy partner. Come on, you're getting out of here. You don't belong here. Don't Let's touch me. Get away from her. She's just brilliant. Uh, she's like a one-of-a-kind comedian and always has been, and yet we've never seen her in a comedy like this. There's nothing better for her to do, and there's no one better to do it. Also opening wide this weekend after a hugely successful limited release last weekend, it's Wes Anderson's Asteroid City with Scarlett Johansson among the ensemble cast. You're not here. We're not there. The car exploded. She tells me she was so buried in trying to create a good character that she didn't see that the quarantine aspect of the script was mirroring what society had gone through in the past couple of years. You know, I feel like Brian Cranston explained it to me in Cannes, and I thought, oh yeah, I guess you're right. That's funny. Asteroid City and No Hard Feelings are both only in theaters this weekend. Ethan, this mission of yours is going to cost you dearly. First tracking is out for the upcoming Mission Impossible sequel, Dead Reckoning. It's looking at a $90 million opening weekend in North America. That would be the best start of the franchise. It's in theaters July 12th. And four-time Oscar winner Frances McDormand with a birthday today. She's 66. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. 455, 77 degrees. And it's a great Friday morning for San Antonio Spurs fans. Victor Wimbayama is officially coming to the Alamo City today. And up next, a look at the mad dash to get the new NBA licensed Wimby jerseys. Plus, what Coach Pop is saying about helping Wimby overcome all the fan expectations he's facing. Plus, the Bear County trial continues for a man accused of murdering his wife back in 2017. Just ahead, the new videos of detectives interrogating the suspect that was just shown to the jury. And a local nonprofit making sure every kid gets a chance to have a normal summer. How they're doing so ahead on GMSA at 6. Also ahead, a traffic update from Stephen Cavazos. He's in the studio. We'll take a look at the forecast as well. That's coming up at 5.01 and 5.03. We'll be back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The San Antonio Spurs select... Victor Wembanyama. Accomplishing something that I've been dreaming of, you know, my whole life. Hearing that, that sentence from Adam Silver, you know, I, I've dreamed of it so, so much that, you know, I, <laughs> I gotta cry, man. We're thrilled that we're able to bring Victor on board. He's obviously a, a heck of a talent. The party has begun for Spurs fans. The city's celebrating and welcoming Victor Wimbanyama following the NBA draft last night. 
so exciting. I hope he stays indoors when he gets to San Antonio. It's going to be hot, but looking out there with live cam right now, we're starting at 77 degrees. And a good morning to you. Hope you had a great evening and rise and shine. It is uh, just about 5 o'clock on your Friday, June 23rd. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday. I guess happy Friday, Wimby Day. We can call it that. Yeah, uh, Mike, take the day off if you'd like uh, to sure. celebrate today. Well, actually, a lot of folks are going to be celebrating out at the airport later on today. Because as he arrives. As he arrives. Uh, I think the schedule is right around, say, 1.30 or something like that. If you are planning on heading on out there, take a hat, lots of sunscreen, take a bottle of water with you, whatever it is, because, yeah, it is going to be hot. And you're going to be standing out there in the direct sun, of course, because we always talk about how all the temperatures are taken in the shade. So if you're on the direct sun, it is going to be even hotter. So just prepare for that. You're going to be there a while. 76 degrees as of right now. That bottom number, 72 is definitely up. It's not as bad as what it was earlier in the week, but it is up from where it was yesterday. We had that bit of a break yesterday. Of course, we are going to be hitting 100 again. We had the break yesterday, only 95 stayed two degrees above normal. The aquifer took another hit, just three tenths of a foot going down though, and mold is on the high side. Now we do once again have somewhat of a heat index to go with this morning, although these numbers aren't that much above the actual air temperatures. 76 of what it feels like out there at the airport, 79 at Port SA. And we do have heat advisories still in effect, or once again in effect, I should say, up until 9 o'clock tonight. And of course, the excessive heat warnings. This does include some of the metropolitan counties, Wilson, Atascosa County, Carnes going down 37, and of course, all along the Rio Grande and then down there to the uh, southwest later on today. So, yeah, it is going to be another hot one. Mostly cloudy, warm and humid this morning. And then later on this afternoon, mostly sunny, not as just searing intensely hot as what it was earlier on in the week. Then we go into the weekend. We're looking at 102s both days. Then we go into next week and we are looking at adding even a couple of degrees to that. And I don't know if... What's worse, low hundreds or the fact that not a drop of rain in the forecast? Perhaps something today, I'll explain that coming up, but yeah, long range, dry as a bone. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, Mr. Cavazos. What's going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, you know what? Things are pretty quiet over here. Uh, we're taking a look at I-10 at the Y. Not a lot that you're seeing. Maybe one or two folks making their way on by, but be on the lookout. This is day five now that we are talking about the same thing here. I-35 South on the upper level exit to Brooklyn Avenue is still blocked off, folks. I did talk to our friends over at Transguide a few minutes ago, and they did tell me that they are still seeing those barrels out there. Remember, this all stems from a fire that started Sunday night and pretty much shut down the entire highway of 35 Southbound in that area. But it's obviously since reopened, but crews still need to inspect the damage out there. So we have to make sure that we plan ahead. If you plan on hitting the roadways in the next few minutes, keep that in mind. Giving you a wide look at the map now, just a lot of construction, not a whole lot else going on, which is great news. None of it slowing folks down here though 25 minutes along I-10 eastbound from Bernie. Right now we're looking about a 28 minute commute along 281 southbound if you're traveling in from Bulverde, not too bad. Uh, and 27 minutes along I-35 southbound if you're heading in from New Braunfels. One last look here at I-10 at the Y. It looks like our Friday morning commute is off to a good start. Let's keep our fingers crossed that it stays that way. Guys. Now to late breaking news, a disturbance in an apartment complex has ended with San Antonio police officers shooting and killing a woman. It happened just a few hours ago on Old Pearsall Road, not far from Loop 410. Katrina Weber is live at the scene and Katrina, we understand this started with a response from firefighters. Well, that's according to what Chief McManus has told us, that this initially was a call about a woman who was breaking or tampering with a fire alarm inside her apartment here. Now, this is, these are the Rosemont at Miller's Pond apartments, and this is where police still have a pretty active investigation going on. This happened right after 2 o'clock this morning. Now, police say initially firefighters showed up. They uh, had some sort of exchange with the woman, and then they backed out of the apartment. Officers showed up, continued uh, interacting with this woman and according to the chief uh, the officers told them that there uh, was that the woman somehow threatened them and then that, that is when three officers fired their guns at this woman shooting and killing her now the chief says he did not actually have a chance to look at any body cam video that is what they plan to do later on today uh, to ex uh, understand exactly what went wrong how the how things went downhill uh, so they're not exactly sure what happened what threatening move this 
this woman might have made, whether there were any weapons involved, all of those questions still need to be answered. But that woman who was in her early 40s was shot and killed, three police officers firing their weapons. The chief described those officers as a two, five, and 14-year veteran. And again, all this still under investigation. He says that this initial story is just that initial, that uh, they will fill in some of the blanks as they're able to talk more in depth with those officers and take a look at their body cam video. Reporting live on the Southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. In other headlines this morning, Victor Wimbenyama is officially waking up a spur after Commissioner Adam Silver announced him as the number one pick in the 2023 NBA draft. Wimbenyama is expected to arrive in San Antonio around about one this afternoon, and we're going to cover his arrival on air and online. And even though Wimby knew he would be the number one pick for the Spurs, it was still an emotional evening for the 19-year-old. Spurs fans have been a little emotional as well. They've been pumped up since San Antonio won the first pick in the draft lottery, and now they get a player who can shoot, rebound, block shots, and handle the ball. They are also getting a young player with a veteran's mentality and work ethic who is ready to embrace his new city and team. Uh, my message to them, you know, um, is um, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna give 100 percent, make every, all, all, all that's in my power to, to make this franchise win, you know, to have impact on the franchise and the fan base and the community. Uh, this was a cool moment to see Victor doing his first interview live on national TV. And the Spurs top pick from last year, Jeremy Sohan, came over to greet Wemby. And right after the Spurs picked Victor Wimbenyama out of the Spurs practice facility, head coach Greg Popovich finally got to talk about Wemby to the media. It's his first public comments on the French superstar. Pop was asked about what he will tell Wemby about handling all the pressure that is now on his shoulders. Well, uh... I'll know what I'm going to say to him when I get to know him a little bit better. Uh, we don't have a personal relationship yet, uh, but from what I've seen, uh, I don't think he's going to need a lot from me in handling pressure. Uh, his parents have already done a hell of a job. Well, now that Wimby is on his way, we know you need that merch. Of course, there's already a mad dash to get the new NBA licensed Wimby jerseys. RJ Marquez shows us the rush to be one of the first to own a new piece of Spurs fandom history. Wimby, 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 Wimby. These Spurs fans waited in line for hours for this moment. A first look at the official Spurs jersey with Victor Wembanyama's name on the back. I came to the draft party, but after I, the main reason I came was to get the jersey, and I'm, I'm just so excited. Colby Parker was first in line to get his hands on the Wemby jersey in silver and black. He described what it means for Spurs Nation. Hope for Spurs fans. Hope that we can possibly get back to that championship level. Parker was one of thousands of fans who rushed the Spurs Pro Shop to pick up Wemby merchandise. It's been amazing to see the reaction that fans have had, just to feel the excitement. It is truly palpable. Spurs officials say they have been stocking up for draft night the moment the team won the lottery. This is a unique situation. Um, this is one of, you know, one of the most talked about drafts in the history of the NBA draft. Um, but I do think we're going to be okay on inventory. And with Wemby Mania just starting in San Antonio, they are ready to meet the demand. We are expecting a high volume of folks to, to want to be here and, and to want to get jerseys and merchandise. And I've never seen anything like this, but I've also never experienced the love of a fan base like Spurs fans have for their team. Season ticket holders, 30. And a lot of things happened last night that you might have missed. Right now on Queso.com, our full coverage of Wendy and the NBA draft, as well as the reactions from fans. We have how you can be the first to own one of those Wimbayama jerseys and why Lakers star LeBron James once called Wimby an alien. So it's all online right now on our website at Queso.com. And the trial continues for a man accused of the murder of his wife back in 2017. That's when Elizabeth Contreras disappeared and right after saying she was going to pick up her work schedule. Now, about a week later, her remains were found in the south side field and police arrested her estranged husband, Guadalupe Contreras. A jury yesterday saw a video of detectives interrogating Contreras. In it, he tells investigators that he saw Elizabeth the day before she was reported missing. He said she stopped by his work and also said he didn't know what happened to her after that. 
telling you, I don't know. You know, if, I, if I knew, then I would have told you a long time ago. Testimony in this trial continues later this morning. If he is convicted, Contreras is facing up to life in prison. Right now, 509, 77 degrees. And just ahead, why Meta is pulling its news application from Facebook and Instagram in Canada. Plus, five men on board that sub searching the Titanic wreckage site. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, what the U.S. Navy discovered days ago. I'm back here at home outside with live cam on your Friday morning, one day before the weekend and the first full summer of a uh, weekend rather of summer 2023. You're watching GMSA. 513 now to the tragic end of the deep sea dive to the wreckage of the Titanic. The Coast Guard says pieces of the sub have been found in a debris field near the Titanic. And as ABC's Ike Ajachi explains, the U.S. Navy is now confirming new information regarding the vessel's likely implosion. This morning, a tragic end to a days-long harrowing search mission for the five men lost aboard a submersible exploring the Titanic wreckage site. The Coast Guard announcing search crews have found five pieces of the missing sub nearly a third of a mile from the bow of the Titanic. The five passengers are presumed dead, including Stockton Rush, the CEO of the sub's company Ocean Gate. A senior U.S. Navy official confirms to ABC News that an underwater acoustic system heard what was likely that missing sub imploding on Sunday near the site, not long after the vessel began its voyage. The Navy said it passed the information on to the Coast Guard, but the search continued to make every effort to save the lives on board. This is an incredibly unforgiving uh, environment down there uh, on the seafloor. Uh, and uh, the debris is consistent with a catastrophic uh, implosion of uh, the vessel. Experts say a fault or a failure in the hull of the sub could have led to the implosion as the vessel gave way to the intense pressure of the deep sea. James Cameron, director of the Oscar winning film Titanic, calling this yeah. incident a yeah, preventable please. tragedy. Yeah. I'm struck by the fact that somehow, you know, individuals, companies have managed to miss the lesson of Titanic itself. Now we have two wreck sites adjacent to each other that both both represent, um, in my mind, reck recklessness. In a 2018 court filing, a former OceanGate employee voiced concerns over the vessel's viability, saying he warned the company that flaws in the sub's carbon fiber makeup could grow with each dive under such pressure. The dispute was settled out of court. Officials from the Coast Guard now say they faced a daunting investigation ahead. They're not sure if recovering the crew members' remains will be possible. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. 515, 76 degrees. Coming up next, a first look at YouTube TV's newest multi-view feature that includes some non-sports options. Michael, dig this. We'll show you an app that turns your smartphone into a thermometer. Fancy ran off a cupcake. Listen, don't worry. I'll find your dog. Oh, my baby. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, well, I'm happy. Me too. You can count on me. Just like people have been relying on Geico for over 85 years. <laughs> and he beat me to that. We all know you could have helped too. <laughs> oh, be nice. <laughs> I know. So sensitive. Okay. Can I have my dog? Sure, yeah, of Thank course. Thank you so you much. <laughs> you know, will you? Let me have my moment. Geico. Over 85 years of trusted service. It's nothing. Sounds like something. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. Pepto-Bismol coats and soothes for fast relief when you need it most. <laughs> Pass me a lifting. Gotcha, T-Pain. Open summer with lift and peach iced tea. <laughs> Welcome back. Just about 520. Good morning, family. Hey, good, good morning. How are you doing? Sure. I'm a little tired today. I've been yeah. moving. Oh, that's right. You've been uh, busy yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah, I've been busy. I've been a little sleepy. And I've never heard anybody ever say, that fun. That was fun. That's yeah. never fun. <laughs> no. I don't wish that upon anybody. Yeah. My yeah. neighbor's moving, too. Oh, no, gosh. I don't, uh, 
Bless your heart. Glad, glad, yeah, we're not, glad I'm not alone. Misery does love company. But the end result is <laughs> awesome because you get rid of stuff and then you go into a new place and it'll mm. be good eventually. Maybe in a month or two. I'll, I'll probably be in better spirits then. But you know what's getting me by is the good traffic that we're seeing this morning. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> not a lot going on out there this morning. No, it really doesn't actually. So, uh, but you know, taking a look around town, you know, there's really not a lot going on this morning. So that's some relief on my end. But be on the lookout, guys. This is day five of this closure out there. I did talk to our friends at Transguide earlier in the morning. They did tell me, yeah, we're still seeing those barrels out there at the exit to Brooklyn Avenue. Remember, this stems from that fire that started uh, in, a, in a homeless encampment, according to the San Antonio Fire Department, shut down a portion of I-35 uh, Sunday night into the early hours of Monday morning. But that exit to Brooklyn Avenue has been blocked off for now five days. So we're still seeing the work take place out there. Be on the lookout. No estimated time as to when we'll see that reopen. Wide look at the map. Yeah, not a lot else out there. But but uh, Mike, I know when it comes to the heat, that's not going to make the move any easier for me. Oh, oh no, I mean, or, and, your and, or your neighbor. And no, and if you are outside, I mean, you, you know, you got to find as much shade as possible. We were talking about this at the top of this half hour with folks going out to the airport today, maybe to uh, greet Wimby when he comes to town. Yeah, you're going to be out in the direct sun. Hopefully a few more clouds hang, you know, are here and there, but there's going to be plenty of sunshine out there. So you really have to watch it and then lots and lots and lots of water out there. Beautiful view uh, late yesterday and you could actually go outside yesterday and it didn't feel like it was just an oven out there. It was just a toaster oven, not a big oven. So anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, we do have some clouds around this morning looking out there by the airport, although we did see a plane coming in earlier, so it's not a, a real thick low cloud cover. 75 right now at the airport, so normal low 74. We're in the ballpark of where we should be. Rio Medina at 70, 78 there in Castroville and dew points. They've gone back up. Of course, we had that break yesterday. We've got a dew point of 76 stints, and I mean, when we're getting around these 75 576 is that's pretty high elsewhere. Yes, it's humid. It's not just widespread wet towel fog up your glasses kind of humidity uh, heat index readings right now. We actually don't have one here in town uh, because the humidity is low enough and the temperature is low enough. But obviously you notice it when you step outside, although it does feel like 79 there at Port SA. So same kind of scenario we've had the past few days. Some clouds hanging around here this morning. We will make it up to 92 at noon. And yes, there will be enough humidity out there to make it feel like it's around 110 or at times even higher than that. And we are going to be seeing 100 for a high temperature then later on this afternoon. All right, so this computer model does try to pick up out there to the west. We still have this northwesterly flow in the atmosphere. That's what brought in a couple of those showers, thunderstorms, not only night before last, but the previous couple of nights. And one or two may try and pop up out there in western Valverde County later on, but there'll be very few and far between. Between. All right, quick check of the tropics, and we've got two tropical storms now, Brett and Cindy, and Brett is 60 mile per hour winds. It actually weakened just a little bit. It is forecast to work its way right through the Caribbean and not gain that much strength. And then back to Cindy, 45 mile per hour winds. This one's going to take a little bit more of a northerly path, but still is forecast to stay as a uh, tropical storm and not gain hurricane strength. And this is taking it in through the middle part of next week. So just to the northeast of the uh, the Bahamas out there. So as far as our forecast is concerned, we make it up to 100 today and then it gets hotter over the weekend 102s we're looking at and then even a little bit hotter as we go into the middle of next week the hope being that we have slightly lower humidity in the afternoon so it's not as intense as what it was earlier this week but what don't you see on that graphic any rain double yep. double digits <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. on, on the top row, you have double digits and none of those. And yeah, not a drop of rain mm. in the forecast. I mean, that stray shower today, but as of right now, nothing in the forecast. All right. Well, we'll wait for that chance maybe later on. Yes. Thank you, uh, Mike. Uh, Christmas countdown is coming now. Don't Let's do make it. everybody feel better, right, Mike? Don't do it. <laughs> 524, 76 degrees. You can count down to Hallmark Christmas in July. So. Oh, okay, okay, sounds we can deal. Do that. That's a good compromise. <laughs> good compromise. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, one, three, zero, fireball zero. Daily four, three, nine, eight, eight, fireball zero. Cash five numbers, five, 10, 13, 18, 23. Texas two-step, one, 12, 15, 26. 
with a bonus ball of 32. Today's Tech Bytes, less news on Facebook and Instagram. Meta is pulling news from the platforms in Canada because of a new law that forces tech companies to pay news publishers for their content. The law, which Meta opposed for a long time, takes effect in six months. Next, YouTube TV has expanded its multi-view feature. Users can now choose up to four streams with news, business, and weather content instead of just sports streams. But viewers will still be limited to choosing from a list of pre-selected streams. And a new app turns your smartphone into a thermometer. Fever Phone was created by researchers at the University of Washington. It uses thermistors, which monitor heat within the device, to measure the user's temperature by tracking the heat exchanged between you and your phone. You know why this is so smart? Because a the thermostat has all those degrees. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. I just realized how much I missed Andrew, Andrew Dimbert, Dimbert yeah. in the last two weeks. <laughs> oh, don't worry. He's been waiting for you yep. to come back. Great. 528, 76 degrees. When the mania is far from over in the Alamo City and up next to local business that are businesses that are now booming in the wake of the NBA draft. Listeria to blame for a big fruit recall. Some major big box stores just ahead will tell you which package of these frozen fruit products need to be thrown out. And are you suffering from chronic pain? If you are and it impacts your daily life, you might want to listen to this. Ahead on GMSA at 6, we're going to tell you three simple ways that can change your life when it comes to aches and pains. San Antonio is still riding the high of last night's NBA draft, selecting Victor Wimbenyama as San Antonio Spurs' number one draft pick this morning. Our city waking up to a new hope and a brighter future. Welcome, Wimby. And uh, here we are at 76 degrees looking out there with live cam. Expecting a hot weekend, though. We're going to be checking in with Mike for all of those details soon. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, June 23rd. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Yes. Happy Friday, yeah. and uh, welcome to Wimby later today. <laughs> yes, that's going to be awesome. But you did give a warning if you're going to go out to yes. greet him. If you're prepared. going to be out there, a lot of folks, you know there's going to be just a million people out there just waving and trying to get the first yeah. clips of, of Wimby. But, yeah, lots of sunscreen, uh, hat, shade as much as you can, lots and lots and lots of water, please, because you are going to be out in the direct sun. There may be a couple of clouds hanging around here, but you know, we're looking at early afternoon and there's going to be plenty of sunshine. So that makes you feel not, you won't be just feeling the air temperature, but the sun's going to be heating you up as well. So you just want to really take it easy with that. So we got some clouds hanging around here right now, and we have temperatures that are at 75 degrees. We're just about at the normal low right now. Dew points at 72. Not bad. I mean, it, it's humid when you walk outside, but it's nothing like what we had earlier on in the week. Heat index readings right now feels like 78 at Port SA. Not much of one out there at the airport. It feels like 80 at Canyon Lake. So, again, it, it's just to compare to the worst of it, which was earlier on in the week, it's not anything like that. Mold is on the high side. We do have heat advisories, the orange, and then the excessive heat warnings. Now, this is primarily along the Rio Grande down to the southwest, but it does include some of the metropolitan counties here, Wilson, as well as Atascosa County. And these advisories and warnings are in effect up until 9 o'clock tonight. So we are going to be seeing... Some clouds this morning, a lot more sunshine, and by noon, we'll already be up to 92. 1 o'clock, it's scheduled to come in sometime, what I've heard, between 1 and 2 o'clock. So we're already going to be in the mid-90s. There will be some humidity out there, and then we are going to be topping off at 100. So even by 1 o'clock in the afternoon, as, as folks start to even noon, it's going to feel like the upper 90s and even some low 100s, and even if you're in the direct sun. So again, Got to really take it easy. Weekend forecast, last weekend of June is coming up in the first full weekend of summer, by the way. Boy, it's sure going to live up to the billing. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, any big problems out there, Steve? No, things are looking pretty normal over here, Mike. The only issue that we've spotted uh, over the last few days, the consistent issue, I should really say, is that closure along I-35, the upper levels. Brooklyn Avenue still closed off, folks, but for the rest of town, you can see 37 at Southeast Military. Things are moving along just fine. Fair Avenue, pretty fair as well. 
I 10 at the Y. We have a few more folks out there, but we're inching closer to 6 a.m. So we're going to see the roads get a little bit busier, but just keep this in mind. I continue to mention this and it's going to continue to be mentioned as long as we see those barrels in place, but the closure is still active at Brooklyn Avenue. It's not impacting anyone's drive time. As you can see right behind me, there's lots of green out there, but expect to see some delays as the commute does get rolling, likely around 630 or so. So keep that in mind for your morning commute. Why, uh, why look at our map now shows at 533 just a bunch of scattered construction. None of it is impacting traffic, at least at this hour, and none of it is slowing folks down. If you're traveling into the Alamo City, let's say from I 10 in the westbound lanes, pretty green from Seguin along uh, those westbound lanes. 30 minutes right now, 33 minutes along 87 northbound. If you're heading in from Lavernia and it's about a 31 minute drive time for our, fr our friends down in Floresville. Let's get one last look around town. There's 410 at Marbach, uh, pretty busier spot, busier spot, I should say, and there are too many when at Hildebrand. We're not spotting a lot of folks out there, but we'll keep a close eye on things and I'll have more updates for you throughout the morning. Guys. Updating late breaking news, San Antonio police investigators shooting by some of their own. According to the police chief, three officers shot and killed a woman after reports of a disturbance at her home. Trina Weber is live at an apartment complex on Old Pearsall Road that is near Loop 410. Katrina, is there any word on whether that woman had a weapon? Well, that is the million dollar question this morning, one that police are, themselves are still trying to determine. Uh, the chief telling us that they, he didn't have a chance to talk to the officers in depth, nor to see any body cam video. Now, police just wrapped up their investigation within the last three minutes, uh, took down the crime scene tape that was here. But let me give you a look at the video so you can see the scene that they had going back as far as two o'clock this morning. That's when this all started. Now, according to Chief William McManus, this originally was a call that was answered by San Antonio firefighters. They arrived here. They say that the woman was uh, tampering with or destroying her smoke alarm or fire alarm inside her apartment. Now, they had some words with her, backed off of the situation. Officers arrived and continued interacting with this woman. According to Chief McManus, at some point, she made some sort of a move or did something that the officers felt was a threat. And he says that is when three of them fired their weapons at her. The woman was killed by that gunfire. Uh, all of this, he says, is preliminary. It's still under investigation. They still need to look at that body camera video to determine exactly what happened, whether that woman had any weapons, and in fact, what, uh, what move or what action she took that made the officers feel threatened. He says he still does not have the answers at that point, at this point. All we know about the woman is that she was in her early 40s and apparently lived here at the Rosemont at Miller's Pond Apartments. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Amazing. Yeah, yeah I knew that I was, I was gonna tear in, uh, gonna have tears because uh, every time I thought of uh, the, the sentence, like uh, with the first peak and everything, I got this little tears in my eyes and I knew that I wasn't gonna let, let them in, uh, in my eyes. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Wimby letting out some of those happy tears last night, a special moment they will never forget. Remember, you can relive these best moments from the NBA draft and all of KSAT's coverage from around town. Make sure to check out KSAT.com, the KSAT social media channels, and of course, the KSAT YouTube channel. Well, the Spurs may have won in this year's draft. That also means a lot of big wins for businesses here in the Alamo City. So across San Antonio, the draft is playing a role in spurring big sales at local bars and restaurants. That list includes a local bakery that's whipping up these Spurs sweets. You can see right now they've baked hundreds of cookies, donuts, and cakes all decked out in Spurs spirit. So owners there say they hope it drives sales and community spirits too. As a small business, as, as an independent business, you know, you really depend on the community support. And this has been uh, quite meaningful for us. Now, the bakery owner says its new Spurs themed sweets this year are polo rones, and they, they say they'll be baking it through the actual NBA season. All right, Mr. Wimbenyama, <clears throat> Wimbenyama rather, is expected to arrive in San Antonio around 3.30 this afternoon. We'll cover his arrival on air and online. Right now at KSAT.com, our full coverage of Wimby and the NBA draft, as well as reactions from San Antonio Spurs fans. It's all online right now at KSAT.com.
On to other news this morning, medication abortion will remain legal in Wyoming for now. After a district judge blocked the state's ban on abortion pills, the law intended to take effect July 1st would have prohibited the prescription sale and use of abortion pills. It is the first such measure in the nation. It joins the state's near total abortion ban, which has also been halted as legal challenges play out. Republican Governor Mark Gordon signed the abortion pills ban in March. Ford is revving up its electric vehicle production and it's agreed to $9.2 billion conditional loan from the U.S. government to fund that effort. Ford and its South Korean battery manufacturing partner, SK On, signed off on the loan from U.S. Department of Energy as part of President Biden's push to bring more EV production stateside. Now, the project also includes a factory to build electric trucks. The venture is part of the Biden administration's $25 billion program to reduce U.S. dependence on oil and reduce carbon emissions. White House is aiming to have electric vehicles account for 50 percent of new car sales by 2030. Right now on your Friday morning, 540, 76 degrees. Coming up next, a recall alert for some fruit commonly used in making smoothies. We're going to tell you what stores and brands are affected. Plus, Furby is celebrating a big anniversary. Up next, when Amazon is planning to reintroduce this bug-eyed, gibberish, talking furball from the 1990s. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be a hit again. It will. Looking out there with a live cam, a little humidity out there. Well, maybe a lot when you step outside, but we are at 76 degrees. It'll be cooler, if you will, more so than the afternoon we will face. But we're going to check in with Mike with all those details later on. And welcome back. It's 543 in your morning consumer headlines. Fruit smoothie lovers may want to check their freezers. The USDA says that Sunrose Growers has recalled frozen fruit products sold at select stores nationwide over concerns about possible listeria contamination. At issue is the frozen pineapple used in the products. And according to the recall, a third party supplier provided the pineapple and it has the potential to be contaminated with listeria. Officials say no illnesses have been reported, and the products were distributed to several chain retailers across the country, including Walmart, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, and Target. Many of the products were sold under the store's private label brands, and they were distributed between the fall of 2022 and this week. The FDA advises if you still have these products, do not use them. Instead, throw them away or return them to the store for a full refund. Toy maker Hasbro is bringing back the Furby again. Hasbro is reintroducing the gibberish talking fur ball with a launch on Amazon to mark the toy's milestone anniversary. Hits stores nationwide July 15th. That could be good news or very bad news depending on who you ask. The 1990s animatronic toy phenom was cute to some kids, but sometimes a source of great frustration to a lot of parents. It didn't have an off button. It would randomly wake up from a silent slumber at all times of the day and night and start talking. The new Furby is still noisy, speaks gibberish, and dances. It'll run you about 70 dollars. Oh wow, were that expensive in the 90s? I don't remember how much they I don't sold either. for. Hmm, okay. Oh, let's see what Rooney, <laughs> I know. if she catches wind of this. <laughs> let's see, only if she's asking, but I mean, right. I don't know about Good luck that to one. you and yeah. Luis with that. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> 545, 76 degrees. Up next, if you want a real pet that's not a Furby. Aw, the San Antonio Humane Society is here next with a very special pet that's looking for a new home. We have got a little brother-sister combo here of some kitties. Lucy's, who did you bring with you? Oh, I have little Gadget and you have little Chip. <laughs> I like the name. So. Yeah, Chip and, and Gadget. And little Gadget's motor is just going to town, oh, as you can hear yes. on, on Lucy's microphone. How old are these? They're still fairly young, aren't yes, they? Yes, they're only three months old, little tabby mixes. They are so, so cute. They're from the same litter, so they came to us in April. They were in foster care, and now they're back, and they're ready to find their forever home. There's your sister. Yes, yeah. this little guy is not real sure about being in the TV <laughs> studio here with the lights and everything, and you have the most beautiful green eyes. Yes, you do. Oh, yes. And a lot of little babies here need a lot of attention. That's why oh, you're yes. desperately seeking fosters, Oh, yes. Right? We are looking for fosters. We need people to help us take care of these little babies when they're too young to be adopted. Um, we help you. Our foster team is amazing. They will walk you through every step of the way. We we give you all the supplies that you need. We just need you to be willing to help us out. You know, it's kitten season. We have so many babies coming in, so we're hoping you can help us sign up and become a volunteer. 
And they have another sibling as well. But again, you know, two kitties are about the same, if you want to not, <laughs> about the same as one. They use the same litter box and keep each other company. So it's funny, you were talking, and in my earpiece, I can hear that motor Ray. going down here. So <laughs> if you'd like more information about adopting these two, or especially fostering, fostering yeah. you can determine how much time you want, and if you want puppies, kittens, anything like that, oh, and they yes. supply everything, head on over there to San Antonio Humane Society, Fredericksburg Road, just outside 410, or go to their website, sahumane.org. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Oh. All right, let's get a look here at the traffic because things look pretty okay. 10 at the Y, uh, not really seeing a lot of problems out there. You're seeing uh, commuters just getting a little bit busier, but that's just because we're getting closer to a busy time. I-10 at West Avenue, it's coming at us both the east and westbound lanes, but not a whole lot of it. Let's take you to our map. So this is something I've talked about now for five days, and I hope that you're well prepared about it because I-35 southbound, that upper level exit to Brooklyn Avenue is still closed, and that is following a fire that occurred Sunday night and did shut down a portion of I-35 in the early hours of Monday morning. So the only closure that we see is that exit to Brooklyn Avenue. But remember, that's day five. There's no estimated time, according to Text Autos, to when we're going to see that reopen. So we'll keep an eye on that. But I do want to drive over here to US-90 eastbound. Be on the lookout for this as well. We have a stalled vehicle at General McMullen Drive. Not causing any issues, but remember the eastbound lanes of US-90 tend to get pretty busy within the next few minutes or so as people are making their way into the Alamo City. Lots of construction taking place. So as a quick reminder here along 281 on the north side of San Antonio curb construction. This has been current but should wrap today. It all starts at 9 in the morning should hopefully wrap at 3 in the afternoon. We will see a single lane closure on the southbound frontage roads right there at Borkfeld Road. So head over to ksat.com slash traffic. I have a full list of closures on our website. But other than that, uh, things have been moving along a OK back here at I-10 at Hackberry. It's been an OK morning as people are ready to drive off into the weekend. I definitely am. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yesterday morning, of course, we had some of those leftover showers yes. from the previous night. And then there were the, you know, we always talk about outflow boundaries, mm -hmm. little like mini cool fronts. And they hung around, really can't see them, and they touched off some more of those showers late in the morning. And yeah, it was looking kind of common, kind of ominous out there for a while. At my first glance, I thought, oh, this is the quarry. That's what I thought yeah, too, Yeah, it looks Mike. like it. No, it's not. And oh, okay. I can't <laughs> figure out exactly where that is. Any guesses? I don't know, because look at the parking lot right next to it. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, it, it is deceiving. I mean, but it's like the quarry smokestacks and then a couple of grain elevators on either side. <laughs> Did they build grain elevators out there? I don't, uh, I don't know. But thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, we have a few clouds hanging around here this morning, and otherwise visibility is okay. Temperature is now at 77, so we have gone up uh, just a couple of notches there, 78 in Castorville. Nothing, yes, we are above normal right now by 3 degrees, but nothing just way, way off the charts. Now, we are seeing from New Braunfels, Randolph, Stinson Port, S.A. Castorville, some higher humidity levels down around uh, Pleasanton. Better up uh, in kind of the northern half of the metropolitan area, but these dew points are up anywhere 3, 5, 7 degrees, 9 degrees compared to this time yesterday because we did get that bit of a break from the rain that occurred then on uh, Wednesday night around here. Now, yesterday we stayed at 95 here in town. We had a lot more in the way of some clouds in the morning that really kind of held off the the warming process until early on in the afternoon, but still it was just brutally hot over there from Del Rio over toward Laredo. Today, a lot more triple digits, upper 90s around the area. Most all readings will be upper 90s and like I said, right around 100 around here. And then, of course, we will have those heat index readings close to 110 and then above 115 down there to the south and west. And that's the reason for the heat advisories and excessive heat warnings down to the south later on this afternoon. So the forecast goes like this. 100, pardon me, I almost said 104, 100 for a high temperature. And humidity is going to be okay. 102s over the weekend, and then it is going to unfortunately heat up a little bit more even as we go into next week and not a drop of rain in sight. We will be back. 
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we have the latest on the story that we've all been following all week. The tragic end to the search for the missing sub. Debris found near that Titanic site. And we're going to talk to Titanic director James Cameron live. Of course, he knows a lot about going deep in the sea. Also, oceanographer Bob Ballard, who discovered Titanic's wreckage. And then the reopening of I-95 after part of the freeway collapsed. Vehicles can get back on the road in just a few hours. It's amazing. We are live on the scene. We'll have that and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead to the next hour, GMSA, a local nonprofit, making sure every kid gets a chance for a normal summer. More about a program called Special Reach is doing to help kids with developmental delays enjoy their summer days. Stay with us as we continue to celebrate the San Antonio Spurs number one draft pick. What's in store for the newest Spur, Victor Winbenyama? And checking traffic right now, things are looking good as the sun is slowly trying to come up over South Texas on your Friday morning.